Okay, welcome back. Uh, here we have question number four, May, um, February, March 2018. This question is all about algebra, algebraic manipulation, and such like. So the first question is telling us to make T the subject of the formula. Now, when I make something subject of the formula, okay, I like to explain it um, as if it's the same thing as solving an equation. Okay, except the equation this time just has more than one letter in it. Okay? It's all made up of letters. There's no numbers in it. Okay, so if I was to solve an equation, okay, I have to isolate the le the the term that's a letter term. Okay, so if, for example, if I had, let me just show an example. If I had something say like three equals say um, five, let me yeah five minus t squared. Okay, let me choose an easier number so that works out better. Let's say 3 equals 7 minus t squared. Okay, 7 minus t squared. Now, if I want to solve this equation, I know I have to bring the t on its own and the numbers on its own. I have to keep one side for the letter term and one side for the number term. So when I'm trying to make here t the subject of this formula, I have to keep one side for the t. Okay, and, everyth and the, everything else goes on the other side. Now, I personally like to make the term that I'm making the subject of the formula <laughs> into a positive term. So what I would do is I would say, okay, let me um, add t squared to both sides so it ends up on this side being positive. On, on which case, I have to take away s from both sides because I want this side for the t's. All right? So I added t squared to both sides and I subtracted s from both sides that's exactly what I would do here. I'd say, okay, I want the t's to be on the side where they're positive. So I'll add t squared to both sides and subtract 7 from both sides. Okay. Now, in this case, you can carry on and say, okay, that means t squared equals 4. And then t equals the square root of 4, which gives you plus or minus 2. <clears throat> so here we can do the same thing now. We can carry on. We can't actually simplify k minus s. We could do 7 minus 3 equals 4, but k minus s are not like terms, so we can't simplify that any further. So then we go ahead and we just take the square root of both sides because they don't, they don't want us to make t squared the subject of the formula. They want us to make t the subject of the formula. So we must take the square root of both sides. So you've got t. If you take the square root of this side, the square disappears. You take the square root of the other side. Make sure it, if you're going to put it in brackets to make it very clear that the square root affects both of these terms. So t is equal to k minus s, okay, the square root of k minus s. If you were to write it as plus or minus the square root of k minus s, that's probably even better. Okay, if you don't, there's not a problem because we know that if we take the square root of a number, you can either have a positive or negative answer. For example, I know that 2 times 2 gives you 4. And I know that minus 2 times minus 2 also gives me 4. So the square root of 4 has a positive or a negative answer. Okay, square root of 4 can either be positive or negative. All right, so that gives you plus or minus 2. So the same reason the square root of uh, k minus 5 could either be positive or negative, unless we know something in the question that tells us otherwise. You might say, ah, you know, given that t is always positive, then you just write the positive square root, which means you don't write anything there. Okay, now factorize x squared minus 25. Now factorizing. Now this type of factorizing, when you only have two terms, and you see there's a minus sign between them. You have two terms and a minus sign between them. Yeah, x squared minus 25. Okay. When you want to factorize something like this, okay, you notice that you, check, you have a few things that you're going to check. First thing you're going to check is, are they per perfect squares? Okay, so you check, are they perfect squares? Is x squared a, ter a square term? Yes, it is. Any term which has an even power is going to be a square term. And is 25 a square term? Yes, it is. 25 is 5 squared. You should know your square numbers. Your square numbers are 1, 1 squared, 4, 2 squared, 9, 3 squared, 16, 4 squared, 25, 5 squared, 36, 6 squared, 49, 7 squared, and you've got 64, which is 8 squared, 81, which is 9 squared, 100, which is 10 squared, 121, which is 11 squared, 144, which is 12 squared, and so on, 169, which is 13 squared. You should know some of the, the square numbers, at least this, this number of them, okay, for you to be able to recognize straight away if they're square terms. If you're not sure, just use your calculator and press square root of the number to check if, it is a, if it's a perfect square. It will give you a, an integer answer. 
Okay, now, so x squared minus 25. That's a, um, basically a difference between two squares. Okay, so whenever you have two square terms and a minus between them, it's a difference between two squares. And when you factorize it, it ends up going to two brackets. In one of the brackets, you're going to have a positive number, a positive between the two terms, and the other one, you're going to have a negative between the two terms. So then you simply just write down the square root of these terms in the bracket. So x square root of x, is, x squared is x, and the square root of 25 is 5. So you have x plus 5 and x minus 5, and there you have your answer. If you wanted to check, by multiplying, you have x times x, which is x squared. x times minus 5x, minus 5, which is minus 5x. 5x times, 5 times x, sorry, which is plus 5x. So you have minus 5x and plus 5x, they cancel each other out. Then you have 5 times minus 5, which is minus 25. So you see, it does give us what we started with. Okay, that's called difference between two squares factorization. Now, if you want to simplify this algebraic fraction, okay, it's the same as simplifying a normal fraction. So, for example, if I had a fraction 6 over 8, most of you say, ah, so that's going to be divided by 2, it's going to be 3 over 4. Most of you will say that straight away, it's 3 over 4. But what you're actually doing when you're, when you're saying that, some of you don't realize what you're doing, you're actually factorizing um, this fraction. You're actually saying, okay, uh, the numerator is 3 times 2, the denominator is 4 times 2. You've taken out the highest common factor from these two numbers, which is 2. And then you said, okay, I can cancel them. So you're left with 3 over 4. That's actually what you're doing when you're simplifying an, a fraction, a normal fraction. Okay, so that's exactly what we do when we simplify an algebraic fraction. If you want to know if they're going to be simplified, we have to see, is there a common factor? How can we check if there's a common factor? We factorize. What you can't do is say, oh, let's cancel out these x squared, they're the same. No, that x squared is not multiplying the whole of the numerator. It's not a factor of the numerator. Neither is this x squared. Neither is this 25 and 35. You can't cancel that out because there's no 5 multiplying the whole numerator and no 5 multiplying the whole denominator. They have to be like things multiplied by each other and multiplying the whole of the numerator and the whole of the denominator. So what we need to do is factorize this fraction. Now, the numerator we already factorized in part B1. So you've got x plus 5 and x minus 5. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you write x minus 5 times x plus 5 the other way around. It actually doesn't matter. Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, it's like saying 2 times 3 and 3 times 2. They actually mean the same thing. All right, so now we're going to, do, we're going to factorize the denominator. And the denominator, you see you've got a quadratic expression. It says x squared. There's only one x squared. I don't have to split the middle term to do this. I can just do this straight away by just writing two brackets. And then I can say, okay, I know that you're going to have x times x is x squared. So that there must be x here and an x there. I know that whatever number's here multiplied whatever number's there is going to give us a negative product. So it must be a positive times a negative. Could be written either way around, doesn't matter. Okay. And then I've got to think of those two numbers. All right. Then two numbers must multiply to give you negative. 35. So the product is negative 35, and when you add them together, you get negative 2. Okay, of course, when you add them, as they have, uh, as they have a negative product, they have different signs. So you think of numbers that give you 35 when you multiply them, and the difference between them is 2. Well, that's pretty simple. Very soon you come to 7 times 5. Okay, because the only way you end up with a number which ends in 5 is if you multiply by 5. So 7 times 5 is 35. So it must be that the 7 is a negative one. So the 7 is negative and the 5 is positive. Why? Because you've got to have a sum of negative 2. Minus 7 plus 5 is negative 2. So the 7 must go in the bracket with a minus sign and the 5 must go in the bracket with a plus sign. And there you see it. There's a common factor x plus 5 and x plus 5. That's x plus 5. That, that's multiplied by the whole numerator and x plus 5 is multiplied by the whole denominator. They are common factors. Now you can cancel that out, and you're left with x minus 5 over x minus se um, 7, sorry. x minus 5 over x minus 7. Okay? And that's your answer for that part. Okay? So it's very um, simple, actually. Um, but what you have to remember is you can't just cancel out the x squared. That's very common. Oh, I see that a lot. That x squared is not multiplying the whole numerator. Okay, and that x squared is not multiplied the whole denominator. You can't cancel them out. Even like this, you can't say, oh, let's cancel the x and the 5, x and the x. No, you can't. The x is not multiplying the whole of the numerator, nor is it the whole of the denominator. 
if it was like x times x minus 5 over x times x minus 7, then yeah, we could cancel out these x's. But it's not like that. Okay? Now, part C, uh, write as a single fraction in its simplest form. Now, this is like adding two fractions together. Okay? And it's the same principle that we use when we add two fractions together. For example, if I have two thirds plus, say, a half. To add them together, I first make sure I write a common denominator, which in this case is going to be 6. So I write them as something over 6 plus something over 6. So over here, I'll do the same thing. The lowest common multiple of the denominators is x times x plus 1. So I'm going to write one of them as x, x times x plus 1. There's a plus sign. And the other one as x times x plus 1. Then I'm going to see what, what did I have to do here. This has to be made into an equivalent fraction which is the same value as 2 over 3. So I multiply 3 by 2 to give, my, give, give me 6. So I multiply the 2 by 2 as well. So that's 4 over 6. So, and the same thing here. This is multiplied by 3. So that's also multiplied by 3. They are equivalent fractions with the same denominator. And I can proceed to add them together. In this question, the same thing. I have to see, I have to make them into equivalent fractions. So if I multiply the denominator by x plus 1, I must multiply the numerator by x plus 1. So it's x minus 8 times x plus 1. Okay? And the same thing here. I've got to multiply the numerator, the denominator by x to make it x times x plus 1. So I must multiply the numerator by x. That gives me 3x squared. Okay, now I can write this as a single fraction with the same denominator. x times x plus 1. Just like I can do this, this is now a single denominator. I can write 4 plus 3 and then go and get my answer, which is 7 over 6. So here, I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to add the numerators together. All right Now, because I've got a plus, plus sign here, I don't have to worry too much. If I had a negative sign here and a bracket on this side, then you've got to be careful about the minus sign changing whatever's in the bracket. But here, there's nothing to worry about in terms of, I will just proceed and expand this and add 3x squared to it. If there was a minus sign here, and especially if there was a bracket here that you have to expand, I would... Um, write down the next line without expanding and then expand, okay, so that you're very clear about the minus sign. Anyway, this is going to give you x squared, and you're going to get plus x and minus 8x. Plus x minus 8x is minus 7x. You're going to have minus 8 times 1, which is minus 8, okay, plus 3x squared, okay. Let me just make that a bit shorter so I've got more space. Okay, so there we have, oops, I forget that. Okay, so there we have, we haven't finished yet, we have to still simplify it, okay? Write this single, as a single fraction in the simplest form. We wrote it as a single fraction, but now we've got to simplify. So we've got x squared plus 3x squared, which is 4x squared. And we've got minus 7x, and we've got minus 8 over x times x plus 1. Okay, 4x squared, minus 7x, minus 8. eight minus 8 times 1 is minus 8, that's right. Okay, you're going to have minus 8x plus 1x, yes. Now, what we're going to try and do is check to see if it can be simplified further. If you can factorize this, so one of the brackets is x plus 1, okay, then that means you can cancel out those, those brackets which are the same. So... Let's see if we can factorize 4x squared minus, uh, minus 7x minus 8. Now, let's see the, if we can factorize it, and if we can factorize it into this form, then that would be useful. Okay, so let's just see. If it can factorize it into this form, it would be useful. So if it was to factorize it into this form, it would be something times x plus 1. So that would have to be 4x. That would have to be negative, And that would have to be 8. Let's see if that works. 4x squared plus 4x minus 8x minus x. So that doesn't actually help us, does it? 4x squared plus 4x minus 8x. That's going to give you minus 4x. You'll have 4x squared minus 4x minus 8. And that's not going to help us in this question. So this is our answer. 4x squared minus 7x minus 8 over x times x plus 1. So even if it does factorize, which I don't think it does because You've got minus 32 as your product and minus 7 as your sum. You can think of always getting 32. You've got 32 to a 116 times 2. 
Um, anything times three, no four, eight times four. Mm, that's it, eight times four. And that's about as far as you go. They don't have anything where there's a difference of three if you look at 32 times one. You've got 16 times two. Um, times three, nothing. Times four, four, eight, so 32. Five, six, no, seven, eight, yeah, that's it. So there's another one which will give us a difference of minus 7x. So there is our answer. If it was the case, you could factorize it, and one of the brackets came out as x plus 1, then you could cancel out the x plus 1s, but here you can't, okay? So it's always a good idea to check before in case you can. So there is the answer for number 4 part A, B, and C. Okay, now, sometimes you notice that I take a long time answering these questions. It's like I try to try and build some background for those students who do have some... Uh, you know, problems in their foundations and we're trying to do some sort of quick fixes for them, inshallah, so that they understand um, things a bit better. Okay, so <clears throat> thank you for watching.